Let's Draw an Emperor Penguin, letter E animal this week. Come join me as we draw an Emperor Penguin. That's the animal that you guys voted on. What you're going to need today is a pencil, an eraser, and a piece of paper. So pause the video, go get a pencil, some kind of eraser. You can even use the one on the end of the pencil. And any kind of paper, even the kind that comes out of your printer, that's what I use. I don't use anything fancy. So this is my original sketch that I used right off of the paper that came out of my printer. So go grab those things and then meet me right back here. All right, let's begin. So I'm so excited to do this animal because I learned a lot of information while studying about him. And I think it's going to be fun to teach you a few facts in case you don't know these facts about the emperor penguin. Now, every time we do our lesson, I always tell you to um, make a dot in the middle of your paper. Now, let's make sure your paper is tall today. We want it tall because we're going to be drawing two penguins. And we're going to find the center of our paper by drawing a little tiny dot. So I just kind of take my finger, I figure out where the center is, and then make a dot. So that dot helps to make sure that we proportion our penguin the right size and he doesn't get too big. Now, at the very bottom of my paper down here, I'm going to go a little tiny bit up from the bottom and draw a short line very lightly. The reason I do this is that way I know that when I'm starting to draw my penguin, he doesn't end up at the bottom of the paper and I run out of room. That happens to me a lot if I don't do this little trick. So I'm going to draw a little line to remind me that's as far as I'm going down today. And I'm going to begin by drawing the body of the penguin first, then we'll work on his head later. So the first part of our body is just to draw a long, tall oval. Now, I want to save room and make sure that I have room for that baby. So I'm going to make him a little chubby. So I want to make him a little more chubby than the one in the photo. Do you notice mine's a little chubbier? Because I wanted a bigger baby in my picture. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to draw a nice, big, round oval with my pencil. So I'm just going to come down to the bottom here and go up and around that dot that I have in the middle of my paper. So here's my little dot here. So I went up, around, and back down again. Now I know that as you're doing this, you're going to see I have some mess up lines. You're going to have a lot of mess up lines. That's okay. As we're working, anytime you need to stop and erase, just pause the video and then jump back on whenever you're ready. So now I don't need my dot anymore. I'm going to erase that. I'm going to look at these lines and figure out the ones I want to keep and erase the ones I don't want to. Now we're going to move on to his head. So looking up at his head, he's got a, a kind of a round shaped head with a long hooked beak. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make a nice size oval at the top for his head. And then I'm going to erase where these connect. I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to erase that part right here. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change up the shape just a little bit by connecting the head to the shoulders here so it doesn't dip in quite as much. So I'm just going to connect it like this. They did right there. I changed the line and I brought kind of a smooth line. So I can erase this part right here. That looks a little bit more natural. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to draw a little line like this and then erase this part in there. This is right about the time that it reminds me of a bowling pin. Doesn't that look like a bowling pin to you? Okay. Now, let's move on to the beak. So starting by looking at, here's this neck, and the chin just blends right straight into the beak. The beak comes out and then has a slight hook to it. So I'm going to follow the side of the face, bringing it out, and then a little bit of a hook. So taking my pen, you're using your pencil. I'm going to go up, curving slightly out and then a tiny hook on the end. Now don't make it too deep of a hook, I'm just kind of slightly bringing it down. Now moving on to the top part of the beak, if you look at his beak, it's pretty skinny. So it's gonna be skinny for 
almost half of the beak and then it connects to the top of his head. So we wanna make sure that we don't make his beak too fat. When I originally did my drawing, sorry, I'm getting my head out of the picture here, but I wanna show you, when I originally did my drawing, I had his beak way up here and you can see my erasing lines where I changed my mind. I went, okay, something's wrong. And I make a lot of mistakes when I'm drawing and I just erase them and keep going because that's the way we learn, right? So the more you erase, the more you practice, the better you get. All right, moving on to the beak. I'm gonna keep it pointed at the end. So it's gonna be a little bit of a point here. It's gonna be skinny for a while. So I'm gonna bring it straight back. It's not gonna start curving up to the top of the head yet. And then it's gonna slowly start to connect to the top of its head. I don't need this anymore, so I'm gonna erase that part out. And then I'm gonna finish off his beak by adding a few more details. I'm gonna show you the black and white version of my drawing first to see what I'm doing. So his beak's got this little dip in it right here. And then there's a space right here that will color later that beautiful bright orange. So I'm gonna make a little cut in, just like a line going in. And then I'm gonna bring it back and around. So it's kind of, almost like, it does not look like a mouth opening and closing right there if you cover that up. So I went in, out, and back. So from that space, all I'm gonna do is draw a single line in between the space and that forms the top part of the beak and the bottom part of the beak. All right, moving on now to his eye. And I want you to notice the placement of his eye, okay. Look at how dark his eyes are. Can you even see them? They're jet black and they're very, very close to his beak. So when we get ready to color later, I'm not gonna be recommending using markers today. So normally I would say grab anything in your house, but I have a better suggestion, which I'll get to once we're done drawing. So the first part of his eye is I'm gonna keep it close to his beak as I'm gonna draw a curved line like this. Now that would be super cute. If you want his eyes to be closed, he would look great like that. But I'm gonna open his eye up by just drawing a rounded rainbow kind of shape. Now we've done the same shape when we did the bear and we did the same shape also with our dog. Then I'm gonna draw a half curve here for his pupil. And then I'm gonna lightly color this in with my pencil. You would be using your pencil. I'm using my pen, but you'll be using a pencil. And we're not going to draw the iris, which is the color part of the eye, because the penguin's eye is so black, you really can't see his iris. All right, now check out the marking. This is just kind of a cool shape. So look at this. I figured this out. If I stick my finger right there, doesn't it kind of look like it's a little finger right on the side of his head? So I thought, why not? I'll do the same thing. I'll put my finger here on the side of his head and I'll just trace around my finger. And then it goes back toward his chin. So I'm just gonna find a space and go back to his chin right here. And then I'm gonna erase that one little part right there. So there's a little bit of a gap right here. Now your shape might look different than mine and don't worry about it because when I was looking at all these emperor penguins, all of them have a different shape. It's not exactly the same on each emperor penguin. So maybe your shape is different. Maybe your finger is smaller than mine and yours looks like that. That's great, doesn't matter. All right, he also has a little patch of black right here on his shoulder. So I'm gonna add a little patch right there. It's like a little mini finger on his shoulder. And then we're gonna draw his wings. So let's see how long his wings are. Oh my goodness, they're almost down to the bottom of his body. So the first thing I do to make sure that my um, wings are the same size, I don't make one short and one long, is I'm gonna go down here and draw a little mark where I want his wing to end. And then I'm gonna draw an invisible line across the body here, draw the same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna attach a little loop to the wing on this side. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, a little loop.
And now we're just gonna do a little light coloring with your pencil. So take your pencil right here and just very softly make a very light scribble across your wing, just to remind you that that part, we're gonna color black later with our crayons or our colored pencil. Now over here, that small little curve, we're gonna color that in and then we're gonna color the wing in on this side. See, I'm just scribbling. And then up here on his head, remember, it's very important that we want that eye to show up. That's an important part of him. So I don't want to color really hard. Now, you're lucky. You're using a pencil. And so your coloring, when you color softly, the eye is still going to show up. Because I'm using this big chubby marker, it's not going to look as good as yours. But I know that you're not going to make fun of my drawing, right? So I'm just going to very softly scribble with a marker but you're using your pencil, just to remind you that you're gonna color that later when you use your crayon or your colored pencil. All right, we are almost done with him. The next part of our uh, penguin is his top of his beak is also dark, so I'm gonna color that very softly with my pencil. And then he has a patch of orange at the bottom, so I'm gonna leave this part, the bottom part of his beak light and then later we can color that orange with our colored pencils or crayons and then let's move on to his feet so right here at the bottom where we drew that line we're going to add his toes so you can't see his feet because this photograph is cut off but his toes i'm going to start by drawing just a dot right here in the middle at the bottom let me remove, remove those little extra scratches that i've got in there and i'm going to draw one toe on one side of that dot and the other toe on the other side. So this is gonna be his big toes. So there is big toes, one on one side, one on the other. And then I'm gonna give him two medium-sized toes right next to this first big toe, and then two medium-sized toes on this side. Now color those in very softly with your pencil. And now, you have finished your emperor penguin. Oh, wait, how could we not draw the baby? He's so cute. I, I love this picture. Doesn't this remind you of Happy Feet from the Disney movie? I fell in love with that photo. So I had to, I had to download this one and print it out. So he just looks so sweet. His eyes are closed here. So that's my inspiration for my little baby penguin. So to draw the baby, I'm going to do exactly the same thing we did the first time, um, almost exactly, just in miniature version. So I'm going to start with the body, and remember that was an oval. So right here, resting on the daddy's feet, we are going to draw an egg shape. All right, let's talk about eggs. This is such a cool fact. All right, this is actually the daddy. I know I keep saying male, daddy him, he, and that's because the daddy, the male penguin, holds the egg of the baby while the mom goes out and hunts. Now, we're not talking overnight. We are talking two months. So the mom goes out looking for food. After she's laid the egg, one egg, by the way, she gives it to the daddy, and the daddy has to juggle this egg on his toes for two months, two months. Oh my goodness, think about that. That is 60 days that he is resting this egg on his toes. He has to balance that egg and it can't fall off because if it falls off, it's number one, gonna crack. Number two, the egg would freeze and he has to keep it warm. So he has this fur, it's called a brood pouch. And the fur of his feathers um, is wrapped around this egg to keep it warm. And so while this egg is um, turning into the baby chick, he is juggling it the entire time. And the wind is blowing. It can be like 45 degrees below zero in the Antarctica. But he's got to keep his egg warm at all times. So once the baby has um, hatched into a chick, now we'll, draw the, now we'll turn it into a chick. I'll tell you a few more facts after that. Now we're going to turn it into a chick. So we've done our oval for the body. Well, it used to be an egg. Now we're turning it into a baby. Go ahead and draw a circle for the head. Now, I'm going to kind of overlap mine, but you don't have to. My baby's look, looking a little crooked here. So draw the head and then erase 
the middle. We don't need that anymore. And you can see that the baby is really chubby. Look at how fat that belly is. So we wanna make sure our baby is nice and chubby. I'm gonna chubby up my baby a little bit here. And then the wings, that's easy. We already did that with the daddy. And then look how we're gonna draw the beak. So the first part of our penguin is the beak in the center is we're going to draw a wide letter V. Now, when I mean wide, meaning not skinny like this, you wanna make it wide like that. So a wide letter V. And then we're gonna draw a rainbow on the top. Okay, so the beak is almost done. The next part is a smile underneath. This is gonna be the lower portion of the beak. And that should be pretty close to that V. Can you believe how easy that was? You already drew the beak. Now, of course, I cutify everything. So I'm going to put a little smile, cheek line on each side. Let me show it to you in my drawing close up. See, I add those little cheeks on the side. You don't have to do that, but I think it looks cute. And then we're going to draw those sweet little closed eyes. So I'm going to go right here and draw a little closed eye on this side and a little bit of a closed eye on this side. You could add eyelashes if you'd like to. No, we couldn't see their eyelashes, but I'm drawing them anyway. And then we're gonna draw the pattern that the feathers are formed in. So the first thing is there's a stripe down the middle in black. So I'm gonna make a little racing stripe down the middle. You can color it in softly with your pencil. And then I'm going to give him a little bit of fuzzy, fuzzy feathers up on the top of his head because he's very fluffy. Let me show you him close up so you can see how fluffy he is. See how he's kind of got really fluffy, fluffy feathers? So I'm just going to fluffy him up a little bit around the top. And then I'm going to fluffy him up around the sides of his head. And the sides are black also. So I'm just going to extend that out just a little bit. And then there's a little bit of black fur right here, if you notice it, on the side of his face. Now, one thing that you might notice is that he doesn't have the black on the sides of his body the way his dad does. So we're going to leave that white. But what I'm going to have you do, I'm erasing a little bit of that curved line so that his tummy looks a little bit more rounded. But what I'm going to do to change it up a little bit is I'm just going to take my pencil. Now, we did this for our dog also, and I'm just going to add a little bit of fur across his tummy. I'm just adding a few little lines with my pen. Now, let's move on to um, his feet. If you want to draw his feet, we would copy exactly what we did for uh, the daddy's feet. We would draw uh, two big toes in the middle. I always do the two big toes side by side and then the medium toes next to it, and the medium toes next to it, color those in. So now his feet are resting on top of his daddy, and this is exactly how uh, the emperor penguin takes care of his baby while he is in the wild. Now, to make our emperor penguin look a little fuzzier at the bottom, we made the baby fuzzy. Let's make the daddy a little more fuzzy. I'm just gonna make his fur a little bit chubbier on this side and a little bit chubbier on this side. And see, I'm fuzzing him up down here. This is his brood pouch. Remember that word, brood pouch. I'm gonna erase this line here. And I'm gonna erase this line here. I'm gonna add a little bit of fur at the bottom. I guess it's feathers, I keep saying fur. So then we can turn that line into our snow that our emperor penguin is sitting in. So now I want to talk to you about color. Now, I don't recommend you using markers for this drawing. And the only reason is because the coloring is so dark in the face of the emperor penguin. that if you go in with a black marker, you're not going to be able to see his eye very well. See how dark it is? So let me show you what I did. I used my colored pencils. 
crayons would work beautifully also. I just happened to have colored pencils today and that's what I worked with. So I just use plain old Crayola colored pencils, which is box, same box I've had forever. So this is with black colored pencil. This whole drawing, I just did black colored pencil. I didn't add the color yet. But I want you to look at that first. And now I'm going to show you how I colored him. Because you're going to see something a little different. This is one of my tricks. I love to give you a little trick each time you come to my lessons. So check out the top coloring and check out the bottom coloring. Do you notice here there's almost a blue tint to it? That's because I actually use a little bit of blue whenever I'm coloring with black. So I take my black colored pencil and I color it very softly. And then I take blue and I add a little bit of blue over the black and it makes it kind of like a steel blue color. And that way when I'm drawing something much darker black, this still reads as black. If you look at it, you don't go, oh, that's a blue penguin. But it just adds a little bit more kind of like shimmer to it. I also used blue in all of the sides of the penguin. And then the last place I want you to see where I did the blue was in the white of the feathers. I don't know how to make you see that. That's better right there. Can you see that blue? So the reason I add blue to the white is I use it as a shadow color. Now you might notice there's a little pink blush on the side of the cheeks of my penguin. You don't have to do that, but I just did. Obviously penguins don't have blush on their cheeks, but I cutify everything. And then the other colors that I used was orange. This is very important. You want to put some yellow and orange right here in that little space that we left up here. And the other place you're going to put yellow and orange is right here in that fingered space that we did on his head. And those are the parts of the emperor penguin that are really important to make it look different than other penguins. I really hope you had fun today learning how to draw an emperor penguin. And I hope that you will subscribe to my channel. Uh, next time we do a lesson, it'll be the letter F. And I've got some great ideas. But of course, I need your input too. So if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my lessons. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.